Hello. I think it's starting. Okay, it says I'm live. <laughs> Hello. Um, okay, so I don't know how long it was running for. I had tried to start the live video a couple minutes ago. Um, and I think it started. <laughs> But anyway, um, hi, if you've just joined, feel free to put your name in the chat so I can see who's here. Um, it's great to have you. Okay, so we're talking fast fingers today. Who wants faster fingers in their flute playing? <laughs> All of us. <laughs> um, but it is awesome to have you, hello. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right into it because this video is going to be available to everyone um, for the rest of the day. So you can, you know, hop on and watch from wherever you are, whenever you want to. Okay, so three things that are getting in the way of using fast fingers on the flute. Um, first of all, this video is for you. If you are that type of person who sometimes feels like your fingers get stuck or like they're trying, you're trying to move them faster, but there's just something getting in the way. I've definitely been there myself many, many times. Um, and it's totally normal. It's totally, totally, totally normal to feel that way. Um, and I'm all about developing strategies to basically get unstuck. Um, okay. So as far as things that are getting in the way of moving your fingers faster, the first thing is your hand position. So let me give you an example. Um, if your hand position is not like the most efficient that it can be, you won't be able to move your fingers as fast. So I'm going to give a classic example that I see a lot with my students and that is the flat finger. So basically, I mean like your fingers being flat instead of curved. <laughs> I used to play with flat fingers a lot, especially my pinkies and my third fingers like had a tendency to flatten out like that. Um, but flat fingers get in the way of playing fast for a pretty important reason. Okay, so let's say that I put my finger down like this is a flute key, okay? So if I flatten my finger out, do you notice how it bends inward like that? So it actually makes your finger less precise because when you put it down on the key, it sort of presses the key down and then it really presses the key down. It's kind of uneven. Um, but if you were to keep it curved, then you put your finger down and it just stays put. It doesn't move any further. It just goes up and down like that. Um, so especially in the left hand, I think it's really useful to see if you can learn to play with curved fingers. And I know it's hard with these, the ring finger and the pinky, um, because they're kind of weak fingers. I heard somewhere that the, your ring finger is actually your weakest finger and they're also connected. So it can be really hard and it was really hard for me to learn to curve my fingers. Um, so if you are somebody with flat fingers, first of all, let me know if we have any other flat fingers out there. I used to have them myself. Um, something that really worked for me to train my finger to not flatten out was to just like when I'm sitting there at work or in class or even when I'm driving, like just gripping the steering wheel and just trying to like push down your finger and keep it curved. And, you know, as you do this, see how hard you can press it down. Like, if you press it down hard enough, maybe it flattens out. But what sort of pressure can you put on it where it's going to stay curved? And then over time, you can kind of train your fingers to curve. That's exactly what I did. Um, and now my fingers curve very easily. So that is that. There are other things about your hand positions that get in the way, but that is just like one of the big reasons um, the hand position gets in the way that really sticks out to me. Okay, the second thing getting in the way 
is your scale routine. So raise your hand if you practice your scales every day. Or if not every day, regularly. Like let's say three to five times a week you play scales. Um, the thing about the scale routine is you wanna make sure that you're mixing things up from day to day so that you're not always practicing the same things. So for example, like if you're working out and you want to be in shape like your whole body and every single day you just do the same arm workout and the same leg workout and the same ab workout you're actually not going to build muscle like if you do the same thing every day you're only working the same muscle groups every day you have to like continuously challenge yourself to do new movements to train new muscle groups in new ways um, I think human beings always need to be challenged to learn, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so same thing with your scale routine. If you just play the same scales at the same speed and you know in the same order, you're not going to really grow much over time because you're just practicing it the same way. Um, and you know, practicing doing something the same way over and over and over again, expecting a different result is a definition of insanity. <laughs> so. I recommend mixing things up from day to day, um, different speeds, different exercises, um, and yeah, so there you go, the scale routine. All right, so the third thing getting in the way is partly involved with the scale routine, but this is not practicing slowly. So if you don't practice your flute and your scales slowly, there's no way you're going to get them fast. Or if you do get them fast, they're not going to be even. So let's say that like I have like a run in my music that's like a C major scale. Something like that. Or maybe like a two octave. Maybe there's something like that in my music. And I'm having trouble playing it fast, you know, or like some of the fingers I'm messing up on. The first step is to practice it slowly. So let's say um, I set my metronome to like some really slow tempo and I just take my scale really slowly. So that's the first step is to play it slowly and then inch up gradually getting faster over time. Um, but that's the most important thing because when you practice slow, you can figure out which notes your fingers might be getting stuck on. Like maybe from like C to D, you have like a flute balance issue, like the flute feels like it's dropping and then C to D always gets a little messy. Like when you play slowly, you can identify problems like that. Um, and then, you know, if you can play it slowly in a very clean way, your success rate at playing it fast in a very clean way is much higher. Um, I'm just thinking back on all the days that my, so my mom is a music teacher and I'm like, she used to like tell me all the time, she's like, you're practicing too fast. Stop practicing so fast. Um, so she used to do that a lot. Um, and you know what? Now I do the same thing with my students. I'm like, well, did you practice it slowly? Oh, okay, well, that's why it's not cleaner. <laughs> um, okay, so does anyone have any questions? Um, and I can't, I can see people are watching, but I can't see your names. So if you wanna say hello, feel free to say hello. It's nice to have you here. Uh, we love talking fast fingers. Um, okay, so I think I think I'll give you guys a couple minutes to ask some questions and let me actually play, if you don't mind, I'll play some of my scales that I practice at different speeds. Um, Cause why not? And if you want to take out your flute, make this interactive, be my guest. All right, I got to get my metronome. I'm going to leave the screen real quick to get that. <sighs> Okay, cool. So I'm going to do a few scales. I like to do Taffanel and Gobert number four. That's kind of my fave right now, but I do mix it up. Um, and I have all this stuff in our digital library at Woodwind Academy. 
So let me see, what tempo should I do? Yeah, so this is 92. I'm just gonna play some scales at a nice slow tempo for me. And this tempo, you know, might be fast for you. Um, if it is, that's okay because we're all in different spots in our scales practicing. There are times where I take it really slow and there are times when I go much faster. Hi, Tina. Yay. We have a clarinet player watching. So all this stuff applies to you too, although with the flat fingers, I'm not totally sure about with clarinet. Um, that is something you might want to ask Anna about, um, just because the, I mean, the flute is out here and the clarinet is here, and I'm not sure if that changes, you know, the flat fingers thing at all, but just a tidbit. Everything else you should be able to do with clarinet, um, or any instrument. <laughs> okay. So, all right, I'm going to do an F scale, because I haven't practiced that one yet today. Okay, so I feel like between B flat and C, there was a little bit of my fingers getting a little stuck. So I'm just gonna adjust my posture because I wasn't really sitting up straight. And that, I, you know, if you guys <laughs> study with me, you know that I always check on posture when fingers are a little stuck. So I'm gonna take it up a little bit tempo wise. Let's do 120. my fingers are sounding I'm going to bump it up even more and now F's a pretty easy scale it only has one flat on the flute at least so if I was playing something like D minor or like G sharp minor or whatever like maybe I'll be doing slower tempos yay I'll do this tempo <laughs> bubble there at the end. Um, all right, I'm feeling like I keep running out of air, so I'm going to take it up even faster. And then there, you know, it just continues from there. <laughs> but that's some scale practice that I would generally do each day. Um, if you guys have any more questions about fast fingers, let me know. Um, because you know what? Fast fingers are for everyone. I firmly believe that everybody can play with fast fingers. If you're feeling stuck, it could be for many, many different reasons. Like maybe your posture is getting in the way. Maybe your air and your embouchure aren't really working for you. Um, maybe you have, you know, flat finger syndrome <laughs> for flute players. Um, maybe you don't have the, the right scale routine. So. It could be any reason, but it is fixable. And tied with that, it's also important to make sure that you're using your fingers in a way that isn't going to cause health problems over time. Carpal tunnel, tendonitis. I've had tendonitis a couple of times. And um, since the last time I had it, I had it in grad school, when I started grad school, 2017. I had tendonitis in both wrists. Um, but I figured out why I healed and I redid my hand position so that um, I'm not putting stress on muscles that shouldn't have stress, um, basically to prevent future injury. Um, but yes, okay, so Tina said not relaxed enough. That definitely contributes too. If you're tense in certain places, that can cause like tendonitis and inflammation issues like just by itself and can prevent your fingers from moving fast because ultimately we want them to be relaxed. So when I talk about the curved finger thing, the reason I kind of like 
talk about this is not because of like literally the mechanics of the finger bending, how that affects everything, but also um, when you're relaxed, like when you're like doing yoga and you're in dead person's pose and you're just kind of like laying on the floor and your hands are super relaxed, notice what they do. So if you just kind of let your hand, you know, be dead, the fingers are curved. So you want to try to keep that position that your dead hand is in as much as possible when you're playing the flute. You want to keep as close as you can get to that. Um, if you start go far away from it by like playing the flute like this or something, like it doesn't really look like dead person's hand, then you're going to have some finger pain, you're going to have some trouble playing fast, you're going to have some trouble being relaxed, and things like that. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, that is awesome. Guys, let me know if you have any other questions. Um, just feel free, free, free to comment on the video and Anna and I will pop on to answer them. But I hope you all have a good day um, and enjoy your weekend. It's nice and sunny here in Baltimore, so I'm going to try and get outside. Alrighty. Bye.